Well, it probably comes as no surprise to my faithful TMP subscribers that I have certain preferences when it comes to guns, knives, tactical gear, outdoor gear. Yeah, there's certain things that I just dig. And some of those items may not be the best in their category as far as absolute superiority in the first type of cool, i.e. practicality. Um, you know, they may not be the lightest, may not have the most firepower, may not represent the best value, but I still like them. And that is pretty much the SIG Sour brand for nothing fancy. Love SIGs. I just love them. They're my 1911. You know, other guys are out there are attracted for whatever reason to the 1911 design. They love the trigger, the smoothness, the speed, the accuracy, how it carries, how flat it is. They love it. I admire all of those attributes of a good 1911 as well. However, it doesn't move me to the point where I will adopt it as my primary combat sidearm. I won't. But the SIG P226, you bet. And I did a multi-part series on that video explaining as to why I think it is still, to this day, one of the best all-around full-size combat pistols in, the, pistols in the world. Again, doesn't mean it's superior in every way as we go down these pistol talking points. What it does mean, though, is for me, I dig it. And, you know, enough said. If you dig it and you can shoot that design well, enough said. I mean, it's good for you. So, that being said, SIG has come out with some new designs. And although I'm a huge fan of, fan of the brand, that doesn't mean I can give a new design like this SIG P250, which I'm going to review right now, a buy and automatically assume that it is outstanding. There's been other manufacturers, both in knife and gun categories, who I have a lot of respect for that, for whatever reason, got it wrong on a certain model or design. You know, kind of like Cold Steel, not Bushman. You know, that pretty much fell apart on me. Doesn't mean they won't square it away in the future. But still, the point is, no manufacturer can do it 100% all the time. Therefore, when I approach a new design, I need to get data about it. I can't just pop it on the table and say, oh, it's a SIG, it's outstanding, you guys go out and buy it. Uh-uh. It could suck. It could have issues. It could have reliability problems. It could have ergonomic issues. You know, weight issues. All of these things have to be taken into account as best as I can when I give you a tabletop review. Now, ideally, the best way to do a review is to buy the gun, go out and shoot about 500 rounds through it, and then give you my, my, my take on it. I wish I could. I just don't have the money to do that. Um, don't have the time. You know, every gun I had, I would love to do that. It's just tough. Therefore, you're kind of still stuck with the tabletop review. However, I think you're going to see some points that I'll bring up as we go down that might help guide your decision, you know, pro or con on the SIG P250. Uh, I will say that I am much more excited about the design than I was last year because I have more data. And we'll talk to that as we get into the POU, which is like right now, philosophy of use is POU, of course, and that means how do you intend on using this gun? What applications do you envision using it for? Well, obviously, it is a defensive pistol. You know, if you're a law enforcement officer or, heck, military dude, maybe offensive. Even civilian sheepdog just depends on what's going on. Never eliminate that option here in TMP. So that's what it is. It's a combat pistol. Now, you could use it recreationally, no doubt. Um, be prepared to take out a second mortgage. That's how expensive ammunition is these days. Uh, even reloading isn't that cheap, so I don't know if I would totally classify this as a recreational pistol. To me, a recreational pistol is one you can shoot like a lot. Maybe along the lines of a Ruger 2245 Mark III or the excellent Browning Buck Mark. Those are recreational pistols. This one is a defensive pistol designed to save your life, maybe the lives of others. No set on that. Size and weight. This is all good, all good. First, let's go to the SIG catalog and look at some options for the SIG P250. First off, and I'm just going to bust out with this, this is a modular gun, and that's what it's touted as by SIG. Modular means that the interior portion, this module here, can be swapped into different sized frames with different sized slides. And you can pretty much create a gun that fits your hand. Okay, I'll speak to that in just a second. And guess what our pointer is today? We're going to use, speaking of cold steel, the cold steel black rhino. Black rhino. 
Um, but here's the slide designs right here. So here's a full size. This is the one we have today, I believe, the compact. Then you have the subcompact. This is very analogous to the P228, 229 series, analogous to the P226 series. So just a couple of things that you need to know about the design, because when we start talking about ergonomics, it'll be a player. And these slides, by the way, are interchangeable between the caliber shown, 9mm, 357 SIG, 40 Smith. If you want that 45 ACP, no problemo, except you're going to have to use a different sized slide. And also the grips, they're not interchangeable, which makes sense. Much fatter, bigger cartridge. So back to size. Subcompact, this particular model is very similar, like I said, to the P228. However, I think it's probably even closer in feel for me to the 225, the single stack SIG of years ago. And that is an excellent gun in its own right. But the P250, at least this compact one as it's outfitted, very, very comfortable in hand. I love it. The size is excellent for a holster gun. Now I say holster gun and that might confuse some guys. When I say holster gun, I'm thinking of something I wear on the side of a belt in open carry. So I don't know if that's the best term, that's just what I call it. It's a holster gun. Could you use this for concealed carry? Getting kind of back to POU? Totally could. It is blocky though, just like pretty much all SIGs and Glocks are. They're blocky, they're thick. H and K's for that matter, at least uh, the double stack versions. Yeah, it's thick and therefore it's going to limit your concealability. You know, some guys like to kid themselves, well, I, you know, I put that in a pancake holster and it's easy to carry. Um, I just think thickness is a very critical dimension when you're talking about concealed carry. You know, it gets right to the comfort factor for me. And I've carried for many years thick guns, namely Glocks and some pretty decent carry holsters. You can see that Galco, Galco, can't speak, Galco, I still can't speak, Galco, holster review that I have on there too. I carry a two, two, uh, Glock 26 in. Still a chunky gun. That's not to say you can't do it. I'm just saying the dimension of thickness is something you have to take in consideration. If you're good with it and you carry it on your strong side and it's comfortable for you, rock on. I say more power to you. I can think of a lot better guns for the concealed carry permit holder than perhaps a SIG P250 on basis of width dimension alone. Now the weight is decent. I have no problems with the weight. It's basically a 25 ounce gun with the magazine about 25 and a half ounces. And for that, this type of full size 9 millimeter or 40, that's excellent. And I'll make sure I'm telling you right. Yep, this one's a 9 mil. I'll make sure I didn't have a 40 in my hand. But that's a lightweight gun and it competes very favorably against my other standard. You know what this is. You see it coming, the Glock 17. Or the Glock 19 is what this would be more, compa more competitive with. So the weight is excellent on the SIG P250. And truth be told, it blows away the P228 and the 229. A SIG 229 weighs 32 ounces. 228, 20, 28 and a half. The P250 blows it away. Just blows it away. So very lightweight in hand. If you can get past the chunkiness of it in a concealed carry roll, go for it. If you're just using it as a holster gun, you know, carry it on the side, you'll, you're going to be very, very happy with the weight of the P250. That brings us to firepower of the gun, and it is excellent and on par with all of the current designs coming out now. I mean, years ago, 15 rounds was considered a lot. Now the newest models, kind of like the P250 full size, there we go, there's the catalog again, P250 full size, compact, subcompact, and there's your round counts right there in 9mm, that's what I'm concentrating on. 20 rounds, 16 in this version, and then 12. That's excellent. Now I'm assuming that's uh, just the magazine capacity. We have witness holes down to 15 on the side of the magazine. Made in Italy Mac, probably by Mechgar, and probably one in the pipe. So that's excellent firepower for a compact gun. By the way, I want to talk about this in a separate vid. Don't get confused. And when they say the word compact, I think it's a little bit misleading. Because um, guys, when they hear the word compact, they say, well, I can put that on in an ankle holster. You know, I can carry it in a belly band. Um, to me, you want to go with a subcompact, you know, for a comfortable carry in those roles. Some guys think, oh, it's compact. I can carry it any way I want. Well, again, dimensionally, think about, think about your options in that way. 
uh, you're going to be a little bit limited for that. So the firepower, excellent. This, this gets to accuracy. Now, again, I don't have trigger time on this gun. So take it, you know, the data point I'm going to share with you is just that. It's a nut and fancy data point. And it's going to be derived from me talking to associates who have had uh, trigger time on this gun. And two guys specifically that own it. And they absolutely love it. And they cannot say enough about how accurate the gun is. So I think for what it is, the SIG P250 is going to be as accurate as the other P-series pistols. And that is saying quite a bit. A lot. Because remember, a SIG 226 at 25 yards can pretty much put them in a two, maybe two and a half inch group in the hands of a really good shooter off a bench rest. You know, ransom rest, same thing. It's going to be extremely accurate. Pick SIG P250, from what I'm hearing, is achieving the same levels of accuracy. Might be a little bit less if you go with the subcompact or the compact frame because you're going to lose some sighting radius. Okay, and the sighting radius is actually really cool. They list it here in the catalog. I'm probably going to lose it. There it is. 6.6 .6 inches for the full size, compact 5.8 inches, subcompact 5. You know me, if given a choice, I like that longer sight radius all the time. It just makes it an easier gun to shoot accurately, at least when you're not point shooting and you're using those sights. Just a thought. So accuracy, I will say, is superb for the SIG P250. And this takes us down to ergonomics and, interestingly, to the trigger. Because the trigger is, and I forget exactly what SIG calls it, this trigger, but it is a double action only trigger. But it's unlike other double action only triggers that SIG has done, like the DAK or the DAC trigger. It is much, much smoother and much, much lighter. And like a lot of guys have been talking about, it's probably one of the best triggers out there, truth be told, uh, of this variety, the double action only. About six pounds pull weight is what SIG tells us the SIG P250 has on the trigger. Indeed, it's a very smooth and lightweight, quick to manipulate, double action only trigger. However, guess what? It's still double action only. Okay, why did I say it that way? Because I want to stress to you the importance of knowing the difference. Double action only means that you're going to have a long trigger pull in order to actuate the pistol, like this. As such, there is a lot that can go wrong in your sight picture if you are not practiced and applying the basics of marksmanship. Good breathing, good trigger control, good grip. If you're not doing that, then expect to have perhaps less accuracy with the SIG P250 because it's a double action only trigger pull. You know, Glocks have a shorter take up, much shorter take up than the SIG P250. That's not to say it cannot be mastered, it just means to say that it's different. Now, some guys will ask, well, which one do you prefer? I prefer the standard double action, uh, first shot, transition, single action. The standard SIG trigger. I like that trigger. Because I can easily drop the dedicated hammer drop to transition back to double action only. And if I have to, I can go to single action for better speed and better accuracy. You will not have that option with the SIG P250. Every shot will be a long, albeit smooth, trigger pull. So be advised, that's something you should dry fire practice with a lot and you'll get better at it. Um, I find it to be more of, a, more of a disadvantage at longer ranges. Not so much of a disadvantage at shorter ranges. You know, 7 to 15 yards. In my shooting, both duty and personal, I find it not to be a big issue. You know, within 15 yards, a smooth double action only trigger can function just fine. Speed too, it's actually pretty darn quick. And this is one of the better double action uh, triggers, like I've said probably about three times now, that I've had, I've seen in a semi-automatic pistol. It just rocks. So excellent trigger. Practice with it. The controls are simple. Don't you like simple? I do. There's your mag release. By the way, very well designed, angled towards the thumb, no sharp edges, triangular in nature. They're not trying to change the world like H&K does with their trigger guard mounted mag release. Love it. And you can swap it over left to right if you're a lefty. So it's ambidextrous. Very cool. Love that mag release. Excellent. There's your slide release. 
simple, right where we thought it should be, and there it is. No, obviously no hammer drop here on this particular SIG because the hammer is internal. Not internal, but it's bobbed. So you don't have to worry about that. And there's your takedown lever right there. Simple, that's it. I like simple. No safety catch to worry about, it's just simple. The feel, like I mentioned earlier, is excellent. Very reminiscent of a P225, actually. If I was to make a polymer-framed P225, that's kind of what the P250 feels like. Actually, the P250 in some ways feels better because I love the shape and the ergonomics of the grip. It's got a nice hump indentation right here for your thumb, a thumb shelf, so to speak. Interesting stippling on the front, which is actually functional, so is the side. Overall, the polymer frame is very ergonomic, feels great. It let, at least this compact version does in my hands. And again, if you don't like it, well, I suggest buying the one you like right off, but if you don't like it, you can swap it out. And here in the catalog, they show the different dimensions for the different ergonomic grip, grip sizes. And it should, you know, I won't go over the dimensions, but you can see that it's a little bit thicker for bigger hands, and that's what it's for. Now, while we're on the subject of interchangeability, let me mention this. I think a little bit uh, much is made over the issue of interchangeability. In other words, hey, buy one gun, you can swap it over and make it just how you want. Um, I think for most users, that is really not an issue. In fact, the interchangeable grips, all that I think is way overplayed. If you go to the gun store and get a gun that fits your hand, guess what? You're probably not going to change anything on it. And most users, when they buy the PIG SIG P250, are pretty much going to buy the version that fits them, and they're not going to swap stuff out. Now, in certain countries, and I'm talking to maybe some of my European viewers, maybe some of my Pacific Rim viewers, where you're issued a certificate for one serial number, then maybe the SIG P250 would be a godsend to you. Because then you can swap out different calibers, different size slides, and you're still working with just one serial number. The fire control group inside the pistol is the gun. It's not the polymer frame, and it's not the slide. It's the interior fire control group, the metallic portion. Very cool. So in that situation, I could see it making a lot of sense. For most of us, most of the other users, maybe not so much. Perhaps some departments, some LE departments, police variety out there, it can make sense to go with the P SIG P250, and then you can swap things around for the different sized hands that your officers have. I could see that being an issue. But to the average civilian, I think it's a little bit oversold. How's the sights on the gun? Gotta keep going, man. There's so much to talk about. These are tritium variety on this one. They're excellent. Just standard three-dot tritium. Not much to say about them. I always like the three-dot pattern. It's fast. Plenty of light on each side of the front blade there so you can acquire quickly. Decent. Overall, the ergonomics I will call outstanding. And by the way, I still like that flattened trigger guard on the SIG, SIG P250. I love it. It rocks. Yeah, I'm weird. I know that. I put my finger up there. That's totally contrary to everybody else in the world who shoots like that. But guess what? I shoot good that way. Been doing it for years. There's your rail. Put a tack light on there. Decent. That's pretty standard with most designs, and I kind of would like it on every gun that I own because I think the light is one accessory that makes a ton of sense in certain tactical environments. Decent. There's a mag plate right there on the bottom. I forgot to mention that, and there's your magazine previously shown. How's the field strip and maintenance? Well, since I got the mag out, let's go ahead and field strip this. It's very easy because it's a SIG. How about all guns are this easy? Just rotate the takedown lever. Try not to pinch the fat of your hand like I always do. Slide comes off. Bam. Done. If you want to go further like that, take the barrel out. And that's how you're going to clean the barrel. Clean it, clean it from the chamber end like so. Put it back together. I put a little drop of CLP right here, right there maybe. Slip 2000, whatever your lubrication of choice might be. And while we have it out, there's that fire control group, the metallic portion. That's what the slide rides on. There's the front steel rails and the back steel rails. There's the bobbed hammer, all integrated in that module. Isn't that cool? And that module can switch over to whatever type of grip you want. So I guess if you know, if you just want to have one gun and swap calibers all the time, maybe it is a good thing. Maybe it is something you would use. And then you just put it back, rotate the takedown lever, 
function check, safe direction, done. That's field strip, simple as it comes. The only one simpler is the Glock. They're excellent. But field strip maintenance, very, very simple on the SIG P250. Accessories and versatility, of course, we talked about the rail. You can slap a light on there. Versatility, uh, you might say it's excellent um, because you can swap out the entire frame of the gun. You know, some guys say, well, I can't really modify the grip. Well, actually, you can. You're going to modify the whole gun to do it, and it's probably going to be more of an expensive proposition than other pistols might be, but you can do it. And if you've got a weird size hand, no doubt you'll probably find a grip size that's going to fit you just fine. So the sights might be kind of a downside because it has a very interesting dovetail in the back. You can see those are not dovetailed like a normal sight, nor are they driftable left to, left to right. The front sight is, however, so the sights, it might be some years before you'll see some aftermarket sights for it. That's kind of a downside anytime you go with a new pistol design. In order to get a lot of accessories, like I've said many times before, the gun is going to have to sell extremely well. Especially if it can get in the hands of some police departments around the country, heck, around the world, then you're going to see some accessories coming through. Because then guys uh, or accessory makers can make money off their accessories. They don't want to go into the accessories market for the SIG P250 when they're only going to sell a few number of them. In order for them to be cost effective, they've got to sell a lot of them. So it's just a simple matter of economics. By the way, let me show you this. Lock to slide back. This is a plastic guide rod, just like a Glock. Some guys will have issues with that. I do not. If it was going to be an issue, I guarantee you SIG would have put a metallic guide rod in there. Same for Glock. Notice Glock, even after all these years, still has a plastic guide rod. Now, there's rumors abounding that, oh man, I've seen those shatter. I've never seen it done. I've never seen it, nor have I ever heard of it from a reputable source. And I interact with a lot of officers that shoot Glocks with those plastic guide rods. Really not a problem. So I wouldn't fret. Trust these companies, if they need to be metal, they would probably make it metal. Not to say, again, like the first part, they're not perfect, but they generally get most things right. Value on this gun, not too great, truth be told. It's going to be around the $600 point. That's a lot. I mean, if you look at a Ruger SR9, which is an outstanding 9mm semi-automatic pistol, previously reviewed in the Nut and Fancy Project, that is a high-value gun. Pretty much uh, under $400 if you get a good deal on it. This is going to be several hundred dollars more. But if you step back and look at it from a standpoint of, hey, I have some interchangeability here with a SIG P250 that I do not have with other guns, maybe that's a cool thing. Maybe the money's worthwhile. And getting into the second kind of cool, it's still a SIG. You know, for some guys, including me, I'm a sucker for that. I have to admit it. I like SIGs said as much. Durability and reliability. Track records being made right now for the SIG P250. Again, we need some departments to adopt it. We need to have high use and high round counts on the pistol for us to really discern what the track record is going to be on the SIG, 2P, can't speak, SIG P250. All indications point upward. They point uh, to this being a very durable, very accurate, long-term service handgun. But we can always be in for some surprises as we go down the road of track record. We've seen that before, haven't we, with several other designs, so it's just too early to tell. Definitely not going to be as proven as the SIG 226, the P228, which has served as the M11, uh, or the Glock series, and any number of configurations with law enforcement agencies around the world. So the SIG 250 is kind of cutting its teeth right now, but all indications point up. Overall, I'm very impressed with the gun. Would I prefer it over a 229, a 226? Mm, probably not. And that's because I value the trigger of those guns probably more than the P250's trigger for ex exactly the reasons that I showed you and talked about. However, this gun is lighter. It's a 25 ounce gun. And it's interchangeable. It's extremely ergonomic, comfortable, relatively fast to shoot, durable, and rust resistant. I didn't mention that. Um, it's going to be very resistant against elements. I think it's an outstanding pistol. It's going to cost you a little bit more, but I think it's going to amass a very 
good track records for itself. And again, everybody I've talked to that owns a SIG P250 loves it. You aren't going to see too many used ones sitting in owners or in gun stores. This is nothing fancy. Thanks for the good ratings. Thanks for tuning in. Banging another pistol review out for you. Civilian sheepdogs, my law enforcement friends, and military types. We'll see you. Stay tuned.